Hi, this is Jill from Boomer Tech Adventures and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'd like to share with you several different ways to prepare dog treats in your kitchen. This way you can guarantee you know what's in them, which is pretty cool. Now, if you're like me, your dog owns you rather than the other way around. And so I do have a pantry full of treats. But this winter, when it was snowy and cold, and I was sitting with my trusty iPad, probably procrastinating, I said, hmm, I wonder how hard it is to make dog treats. So, the first place I went, of course, was Amazon because I was curious whether or not they made cookie cutters in the shape of dog biscuits. So, tick, click, 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 or tap, 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 there I went. Well, of course they do. So let me show you what I added to my cart and then eventually purchased. The first thing I found were these really cute silicon molds. Now, what's really neat about these is that they go in the oven or the freezer. And the ones I got, well, it's hard to see. This one is paw prints and this one is mini dog biscuits. And then I said, well, I wonder if they actually have cookie cutters. Well, of course they did. And I found this set that has everything from the mini all the way up to huge. So of course I bought a set of those. Well then, I had to find something to bake, to make. Well fortunately, these came with a little recipe book called Delicious Dog, D-O-G-U-E, Treat Recipes, Le Dog, and uh, this particular recipe has all sorts of things from tuna surprise to squash chicken to sweet chicky chicken, Peruvian carrot, etc. But what I really like about it is they have a recipe, craft your own unique recipe. Very simple. So that's what I decided to do because I had everything at home. You need a cup of flour and a cup of wet items. It can be vegetables, it could be fruit, etc. Now this is where you need to do your research or check with your vet because you know there's some things that we can eat the dog shouldn't. Uh, so I did that and I found that bananas, which I already knew because I do share my morning banana with Sammy, and unsweetened applesauce were okay. So I mushed up a banana and I added to the rest to make a full cup unsweetened applesauce. Mixed them all together and then put them in the molds. Now the directions call for 370, 375 for 30 minutes and then turn the oven off, leave the uh, molds in there to cool so that uh, the biscuits become hard. Well, this was the end result. Whoops! Now, they really don't look too much like the molds. There's a dog biscuit. But I think that was my problem. I think I didn't take the time to fill in the crevices. But I'll tell you, I've tasted it. I didn't taste test it. Sammy and his friend Sophie taste tested these and gobbled them right up. The other thing I found was if I didn't have the molds, I could still use that recipe, a cup of flour and a cup of wet ingredients, and I could do it like drop cookies. Probably not cook it at high as heat, uh, maybe 350 because they did get a little toasty on the bottom without the mold. But that I thought was pretty cool. So then I said, all right, that's good. The dogs like that. But what about a rolled cookie? Something that I can use the cookie cutters on. So again, I went back to my iPad. Technology is wonderful. I use my digital devices all the time. And I simply Googled 
dog treats. And at allrecipes.com, I found peanut butter and pumpkin dog treats. Well, again, easy to make. Two cups of flour, a half a can of pureed pumpkin, and two tablespoons of peanut butter. They called for crunchy peanut butter. I had some, so I used it. Now, if you're gonna use peanut butter, you want to make sure to check the ingredients for X, Y, L, I, T, O, L. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I'm not going to, but this ingredient has started to show up in peanut butter. It's a sweetener and it is toxic to dogs. So check your peanut butter before you feed your dog any of what you have in the house. So, oh, two eggs, and then you can add cinnamon, other stuff that the dog might like. I didn't. Makes a nice dough, I rolled it out, and here are the end results. I've got the huge one, which actually I made for some neighbor's dog, though I did give Sammy one, he's a little pooch, and uh, he looked really silly in it. Maybe I can get him to photo bomb. Sammy, do you want a cookie? Go get it. Can you see him? Yeah, he's just he's just a little boy. And uh, that cookie will keep him busy. I wouldn't give him any because he really shouldn't be eating that. So that was another treat that was very easy to make. The last several have to do with freezer treats. Now, when I made the cookies, I had pureed pumpkin left. Now, what am I going to do with it? Well, one thing I do with it is I will just give Tammy a, a teaspoon of it. He loves it, licks it up. And pumpkin is good for dog's digestion. And if you're the one on poop control, and um, sometimes things are a little soft, this will firm it up. That's all I'm going to say. So I made squash pops right in the uh, freezer tray in the um, ice cube tray. Now this is not original with me. I have a friend who used to make her own fruit pops, as I'm sure many of you did when her children were growing up. And she came up with the idea of freezing the squash. Now the dogs love it. Uh, on a hot day like today, you pop it out of the freeze, uh, out of the, the tray, throw it out on the deck, or the grass, you don't want to do it inside because it's very messy. Uh, dogs love licking it, chasing it around, etc. Then while I was looking, I found another idea for using ice cream trays, which I thought was brilliant. You take your dry dog food and you put a few in the trays. You don't fill it up, but enough to give crunch. And I'll do a couple more. And then, using broth that you have on hand, it could be beef broth, chicken broth, vegetable broth, uh, homemade broth, or uh, a low salt variety you get in the grocery store. And you fill up the rest of the cubes. And so when you freeze it, oops, I'm getting a little carried away here. When you freeze it, not only do they have the taste of the broth, but they also have the crunch of the dry kibble or whatever you're using. So again, it goes in the freezer and you pop them out one at a time. The last treat I'm gonna share with you was another one I found online where instead of kibble, you mix Again, fruit or vegetables that are safe for the dog to eat. Make sure you do your research or talk to your vet. In this case, I had some leftover blueberries from breakfast, which were starting to look a little withered. I had uh, some carrots. No, oh, I'm sorry, not carrots, it's apple. He won't eat carrots. What can I say? Sometimes he's a strange pup. And I mixed them up and Again, put some in the trays, just like that. Don't fill it all the way up, because then you will have room for the broth, or it might get messy. Okay, 
take the broth, fill in the cube sections. Here we go. And then um, you're going to freeze it. And what I usually do then is pop them out, put them in a freezer bag, throw them in the freezer so it's very easy to reach in, pick one out, throw it out on the deck or out in the grass. So now Sammy has a smorg smorgasbord. He's got pure pumpkin puree, which he loves. He'll eat kibble in any condition with, uh, this is chicken broth. And he's got apples and blueberries. So he can have quite the variety because I do treat my dog pretty well. Okay, so those are some of the ideas for homemade treats where you control and I control the ingredients that our pups are getting. I uh, hope you'll try a few and um, thank you for stopping by my kitchen today and um, let us know in the comments below this video whether or not you tried any or do you have a favorite recipe. So bye for now.